Hi, I'm going to start reading the Anid, Book One, A Faithful Haven, by Virgil. It's translated by Robert Fitzgerald. It's this book, this book right here, which I got at Strands in New York City. Book One, A Faithful Haven. I sing of warfare and a man at war. From the sea coast of Troy in early days, he came to Italy by destiny, to our Lavinian western shore. A fugitive, this captain, buffeted cruelly on land as on the sea, by blows from powers of the air. Behind them, baleful Juno, in her sleepless rage, and cruel losses were his lot in war, till he could find a city and bring home his gods to Latium, land of the Latin race the Alban lords, and the high walls of Rome. Tell me the causes now, O muse, how gall in her divine pride, and how sore at heart. From her old wound the queen of gods compelled them, a man apart devoted to his mission, to undergo so many perilous days, and enter on so many trials. Can anger, black as this prey on the minds of heaven? Tyrant sellers in that ancient time held Carthage on the far shore of the sea, set against Italy in Tiber's mouth. A rich new town, warlike, and trained for a war. And Juno, we are told, cared more for Carthage than for any walled city of the earth, more than for Samos even. There her armor and chariot were kept, and fate permitting, Carthage would be the ruler of the world. So she intended, and so nursed that power. But she had heard long since that generations born of Trojan blood would one day overthrow her Tyranian walls, and from that a blood a race would come in time with ample kingdoms, arrogant in war. For Libya's ruin, so the parquet spun. In fear of this, and holding in memory the old war she had carried on at Troy, for Argo's sake, the origins of that anger, that suffering still rankled deep within her, hidden away, the judgment Paris gave, snubbing her loveliness. The race she hated it, the honors given, ravished Ganymede. Saturnarian Juno, burning for it all, buffeted on the waste of sea those Trojans left by the Greeks and pitiless Achilles, keeping them far from Latium. For years they wondered as their destiny drove them on from one sea to the next. So hard and huge a task it was to found the Roman people. They were all under sail in open water, with Sicily just out of sight astern, lighthearted as they ploughed the white capped sea with sterns of cutting browns. But never free of her eternal inward wound, the goddess said to herself, Give up what I began. Am I defeated? Am I impotent to keep the king of Teucrians from Italy? The fates forbid me, am I supposed? Could Pallas then consume the Argive fleet with fire and drown the crews? Because of one man's one mad act, the crime of Ajax, son of Oileus? Yes, yes, she said. She hurled out of Plowland, lancing fire of Jove, scattered the ships, roughed up the sea with gales, then caught the man, bolt struck, exhaling flames in a whirlwind and held him on a rock. But I, who walk as queen of all the gods, sister and wife of Jove, I must contend for years against one people who adores the power of Juno after this, or lays an offering with prayer upon her altar. Smoldering, putting these questions to herself, the goddess made her way to storm cloud country, Iola, the weather breeding isle. Here in a vast cavern, King Iolus rules the contending winds and moaning gales as warden of their prison. Round the walls they shape and blustered on the ground. The din makes a great mountain murmur overhead. High on the cytotel enthroned, scepter in hand, he mollifies their fury. Else they might flay the sea and sweep away land masses and deep sky through empty air. In fear of this, Jupiter hid them away in caverns of black night. He set above them granite of high mountains and a king empowered at command to rein them in or let them go. To this King Juno now made her petition. Iolus, the father of gods and men, decreed and fix your power to calm the waves and make them rise and win. 
The race I hate is crossing the Tuscan Sea. The Tuscan Sea. Transporting aluminum with her household gods, beaten as they are, to Italy. Put new fury into your winds and make the long ships founder. Drive them off course. Throw bodies in the sea. I have fourteen exquisite nymphs, of whom the loveliest by far. The Opia shall be your own. I'll join you two in marriage. So she will spend all future years with you, as you so well deserve, and make your father of her lovely children. Said Aeolus, to settle on what you wish is all you need to do, your majesty. I must perform it. You have given me what realm I have. By your good offices I rule with Jove's consent, and I recline among the gods at feast for your point. Me, lord of wind and cloud. Spear half reversed, he gave the hollow mountainside a stroke, and where the portal opened, winds and ranks, as though drawn up for battle, hurled through to blow across the earth in a hurricane. Over the sea, tossed up from the sea floor, east wind and south wind, then the wild southwest with squall on squall came scuttling down, rolling high cumbers shoreward. Now one heard the cries of men and screech of ropes and rigging suddenly, as the storm cloud whipped away, clear sky and daylight from the Teucrians' eyes, and gloom of night leaned on the open sea. It thundered from all quarters, as it lightened flash on flash through heaven. Every sign portended a quick death of the mariners. Aenus, on the instant, felt his knees go numb and slack, and stretched both hands to heaven, groaning out, Triply lucky! All you men to whom death came before your father's eyes, below the wall at Troy. Bravest Dane and Domedes, why could I not go down when you had wounded me, and lose my life on Lumi's battlefield? Our Hector lies there, torn by Achilles' weapon. There, Sarpedon, our giant fire, fighter, lies, and there the river Samosus washes down so many shields and helmets with strong bodies taken under. As he flung out these words, a howling gust from due north took the sail aback and lifted wave tops to heaven. Oars were snapped in two. The prow sheer round and left them broadside on the breaking seas. Over her flank and deck, a mountain of gray water crashed in tons. Men hung on crests, to some a yawning trough uncovered bottom, boiling waves and sand. The south wind caught three ships and whirled them down on reefs, hidden mid sea called by Italians. The altars, razorbacks, just under water. The east wind drove three others from deep water into great shallows and banks, embedding them and wringing them with sand, a desperate sight. Before Anna's eyes, a, tippling, a toppling bellow struck the licensed ship, Orante's ship, across the stern, pitching the steers men down and overboard. Three times the eddying sea carried the ship around the same place until the rapid whirlpool gulped it down. A few men swimming surfaced in the welter. So did shields, planks, precious things of Troy. Elonius' good ship, brave Akati's ship. The ship that carried Abbas and the one Aletus sailed in, held in his great age, were all undone by the wild gale, and their seams parted and let the enemy pour it in. During all this, Neptune, became aware of pearly burly and tempest overhead, bringing commotion to the still sea death and rousing him. He lifted his calm brow above the surface, viewing the great sea, and saw Aeneas' squadron far and wide dispersed over the water, saw the Trojans overwhelmed and ruining clouds of heaven, and he saw his angry sister's hand in awe. He called to him eastward and south and said, Are you so sure your line is privileged? How could you dare throw heaven and earth into confusion by no will of mine and make such trouble? You will get from me, but first to calm the rough sea after this, you'll pay a stricter penalty for your sins. Off with you. Give this message to your king. Power of the sea and the cruel trident were never by his destiny but mine. He owns the monstrous rocks, your home east wind. Let Aeolus ruffle and all that fall alone and lord it over winds shut in their prison so i'll leave it off there and uh please like it or comment and uh see you in the next one bye